Hi. Today we are going to discuss about filter circuits. This diagram explains the function of a filter. If the input of the filter is fed with a pulsating DC, then the filter will be giving a filtered DC output. So the function of the filter is to convert a pulsating DC or a signal filled with ripples to a filtered output or to a pure DC. The filter circuits that are very popular are shown here. Filter using inductors, filter using capacitors, LC is a combination of inductor and capacitor. Another combination is CLC. CLC is a combination of two capacitors and an inductor. There are even more combinations. For example, CRC filter is a combination of two capacitors and a resistor. Now we are going to discuss about a simple capacitor filter which uses a capacitor for filtering purpose. This is the diagram of a half wave rectifier. We have already discussed this half wave rectifier and we know that its output contains so many ripples. So our requirement is to filter out these ripples and get a stable DC. Let's try to include a capacitor in this circuit. If I'm placing this capacitor here in series with this load resistor, it doesn't give us the required output. Why is it so? We know the capacitors are having a property to pass AC signals and to block DC signals. How can we say that a capacitor passes high frequency signals and it blocks low frequency signals? It can be explained by the relation. The reactance of the capacitor XC will be equal to 1 pi 2 pi FC. F is the frequency of the signal used and C is the value of the capacitor. Let's consider one case. Now we are using a DC signal. That means the signal will not be having any frequency component. By substituting F is equal to 0 in this equation, we can see that 1 by 0 will give an answer as infinity. We know the capacitive reactance is a measure of a capacitor's opposition to AC. Offering an infinite reactance means it will be blocking the flow of that signal through it. Thus, capacitor blocks low frequency signals or DC signals. This property is utilized in this filtering purpose. We need a DC output at this load terminal. As this capacitor blocks all the DC components, this series connection will not work. So we'll go for a parallel connection. The capacitor is now placed in parallel to the load terminal. By this connection, DC signals can be passed through this load terminal and the AC components will be managed by this capacitor. While choosing the values for capacitor and load resistor, we have to keep one thing in mind. The reactance of the capacitor must be very much low when compared with that of the load resistance RL. That means we must select a high value for this capacitor. Why is it done so? These two branches are connected in parallel. When this branch is set with low reactance, the AC signal will easily flow through this branch. So the filtering can be made very easy. This is the output obtained from a half wave rectifier. And this output will be fed to the filter section. Let us consider the filtering process in a step by step procedure. We know as this is a half wave rectifier, the positive side of the signal will be allowed to pass through this diode and will be getting a positive side here. Thus the diode here acts as a short circuit for the positive peak. And the peak value of the signal is indicated as Vm. And let's discuss how this capacitor is going to respond to this positive peak. Initially, the capacitor used here is not holding any charges. We know the property of a capacitor. If the input voltage is varying, the capacitor will surely charge or discharge according to the variation. Here the voltage is varying in a positive direction. At this condition, the capacitor will start to store charge. Thus the capacitor will be charging until this point, that is at the peak voltage Vm. 
as the capacitor is following the signal up to Vm level, this will be replicated in the output. Now, what will happen if the voltage is getting decreased? At this condition, the capacitor is at a greater potential Vm and here it is getting lower. So the capacitor will be responding to this voltage variation. As the voltage is getting lower, now the capacitor will start to discharge. At this time, this diode is not having any role. So we can replace this as an open circuit. And the remaining circuit will be like this. The discharging path for this capacitor will be through this resistor RL. This line indicates the discharging path of a capacitor. But this long discharging path can be accomplished only by setting a condition. The time constant RC should be kept very high. In this case, the time constant can be mentioned as RLC. And this value should be kept very high in order to assure long discharging path. At this position, the positive peak of the input signal is coming through the diode. So the diode will now be active. And at this position, we can see that the input to the filter is getting higher. This means the capacitor will be experiencing a positive variation in the voltage. And the capacitor will again start to store charge until this position. And after this position, the same conditions are repeated. That is, it is going to experience a lower voltage. So it will start discharging. When it faces an increasing voltage, the capacitor will again get charged. Similarly, the same pattern will be continued. And the rippled output that we obtained from a half-wave rectifier will now be converted to a pattern like this with the help of a shunt capacitor filter. The term shunt represents a parallel connection. Here in this case, we have used the capacitor in parallel, so it is known as shunt capacitor filter. By observing the output pattern, we can see that the output is not a pure DC, but here the amount of ripples have been reduced. Now we will consider a full wave rectifier using a shunt capacitor filter. As explained with the full wave rectifier, diode D1 will be conducting the positive peak of the input signal and diode D2 will be conducting the negative peak of the input signal. And the altogether effect at the load terminal will be like this. Similar to that of the half wave rectifier, this output is also full of ripples. And in order to reduce these ripples, we have connected a capacitor parallel to the load terminal. As explained with the capacitor filter used with the half wave rectifier, here also the capacitor will be charging and discharging according to the voltage variations. And the output pattern that we obtain with the full wave rectifier using shunt capacitor filter will be like this. Even with this circuit, the output is not a pure DC. And to measure the amount of ripples in this output signal, we will be calculating the ripple factor. And for finding the ripple factor, we will be considering this as similar to a triangular wave. We will consider this as a full cycle and we will be taking this half cycle. The time period of the half cycle is represented by T by 2. The charging time of the capacitor is represented as T1. And the discharging time is represented as T2. And the voltage value of these ripples can be represented as Vr. And this position can be represented as Vm minus Vr. In order to find the ripple factor, we will first consider the RMS value of a triangular wave. It can be defined as Vrms is equal to Vr by 2 root 3. We will now try to get an expression for Vr. We are familiar with these equations. Charge of a capacitor can be represented as Cv, that is the product of capacitance and voltage. Similarly, we can represent the charge as current into time. Now, let us consider this section, that is the capacitor is discharging and after this point, it will be getting charged. So for representing this charging condition, we can utilize this equation. That is the charge stored will be equal to C into the voltage of the ripple Vr. 
Similarly, this discharging case can also be represented by this equation. Q is equal to current into T. We know that I is equal to dQ by dt. So, Q is obtained from the equation integral I dt. Here, the integrated effect of current is represented as the average value or the DC value of the signal. So, the discharging condition can be represented as I DC into the time that is the time taken for discharging T2. By observing this point, we can say that there is a shift from the discharging position to the charging position. But at this point, these two values will be same. That is, CVR is equal to IDC T2. And from this equation, we will try to obtain a relation for VR. VR is equal to IDC T2 divided by C. By seeing this way, we can say that this is not a perfect triangular way. The charging period is small and the discharging time is greater. The time period of the half cycle T by 2 can be represented as T1 plus T2. And by observing, we can say that the charging time T1 is very much lower when compared with the discharging time. So this equation can be approximated as T2 is equal to T by 2. And this can be substituted in this equation. Vr is equal to Idc into T by 2 C. We know time is the reciprocal of frequency. So T can be replaced with 1 by F. And our equation now becomes Vr is equal to Idc by 2 Fc. According to Ohm's law, we can say that I is equal to V by R. So this term Idc can be represented as IDC is equal to VDC by RL and we will substitute this here. VR is equal to VDC by 2FC RL. We have now obtained a relation for VR. That is, we can use this value for finding ripple factor. As explained with the rectifier circuits, the ripple factor can be explained as the ratio of the RMS value of the ripples to the DC value. We started our explanation with this equation that is the RMS value of a triangular wing is Vr by 2 root 3. So in this position the RMS value of ripples can be replaced as Vr by 2 root 3. In the position of Vr we can write Vdc by 2 FCRL. Similar terms will cancel each other and we will be getting the ripple factor as 1 by 4 root 3 FC RL. This ripple factor for a full wave rectifier using shunt capacitor filter was obtained by considering a half cycle that is the time period T by 2 was considered. But for a half wave rectifier one complete cycle should be considered. So the time period should be taken as T. The ripple factor is seen to be doubled that is 1 by 2 root 3 FC RL. Now we will move on to another category that is inductor filter. We can connect an inductor in the rectifier output segment. Let's have a look onto the special features of inductors. Inductor has got a property of opposing the change in current that flows through it. What will happen when there occurs a change in current? A back EMF will be induced in the inductor and as a result this back EMF prevents the current from changing its value. Thus all the sudden changes in current that occurs in the circuit will be smoothened by placing an inductor in the circuit. Now the question is how we are going to connect an inductor? Are we going for a series connection or a parallel one? Let's discuss that with the help of the equation. Reactance of inductor XL will be equal to 2 pi FL. We'll consider what will happen if a DC signal is provided that is F is equal to 0. When F is equal to 0, it means that the reactance offered will also be 0. That means it will smoothly pass all the low frequency signals or the DC signal. And at the same time, it will be blocking high frequency signals. 
As this acts as a filter to filter out all the AC components, it is better to place this inductor in series with the load so that the DC signals can smoothly pass towards the output section. You are familiar with this output waveform. This is the output waveform obtained from a full wave rectifier. As we have used an inductor filter here, we won't be getting all these ripples in the output. That means the effect of these ripples will be smoothened with the help of an inductor filter. So this will be the waveform that we are going to obtain after connecting the filter section. How this inductor is going to work here? We have already said inductor will be opposing the change in current. That is, when the rectifier output current increases above a certain value, then energy will be stored in the inductor in the form of magnetic field. We can see here the higher magnitude of this ripple is kept lowered with the effect of an inductor. Now, what will happen if the current level is getting even lower? That is, if it gets lower than a certain value, then the energy stored within the inductor will be given up. That is, the output waveform will start rising. Again, there is change in current, so the inductor will be acting accordingly. That is, it will be storing charge and discharging charge. And the final output waveform that we get in the output will be very much similar to that of a DC signal. And the average DC value can be obtained at this point. The level of ripples have been made very low and it is calculated by the equation ripple factor is equal to RL divided by 3 root 2 omega L. Omega can be related to frequency as 2 pi F and the usual frequency used is 50 Hz. So we can reduce this equation as RL by 1330 L. Here RL is the value of the load resistance and L the inductance. Now we'll discuss another category, LC filter. We have already seen that capacitors and inductors are very good in reducing the ripple levels. Here in this type of filter, we are going to combine these two effects together so that we'll be obtaining an even more reduced amount of ripples. We are connecting an inductor and also a capacitor to the output section of a rectifier. We know that it is good to connect inductors in series and capacitors in parallel. So we have chosen this combination. The LC filter has got another name, chalk filter. Even more filtered out output will be obtained by this combination and it can be calculated by the equation. Ripple factor is equal to root 2 by 12 omega square LC. As said before, if we are substituting the value of frequency as 50 Hz, we'll be getting a reduced equation as 1.19 by LC. Let's discuss one more category, CLC filter. The CLC filter has got another name, Pi filter. Here C, L, C are connected, resembling the shape of Pi. We can see this circuit gives much better filtering than LC circuit. The major portion of the filtering is done by C1. It is selected to offer low reactance to the ripple frequency. And most of the remaining ripple is removed by the combined action of L and C2. Here we can see that the output resembles a perfect DC. The ripple factor of a CLC filter is given as root 2 divided by 12 omega cube c1 c2 l rl and it can be simplified as 5700 divided by l c1 c2 rl thus we can see that the filter circuits holds good in filtering the ripples that are obtained from a rectifier circuit thank you for watching